JSB concludes in Arawa. Remote school in poor state. And cyclone hits Fiji. This is National MTV News with Helen Sayer. Good evening and thanks for joining us for Saturday's news. The Joint Supervisory Body meeting held in Arawa concluded yesterday following hours of technical consultation by the PNG and ABG government. A joint communique was signed. Prime Minister James Marape and President Ishmael Torama recognized this as the new era of dialogue through peace by peaceful means. The joint communique will now be intended as a roadmap aiming to create a mutual understanding and agreement. A number of decisions will see more more consultations by the two governments and relevant authorities. The Joint Supervisory Body has agreed to host the next meeting in Enga Province. Location to exchange this just week in the manner in which it was staged, moving it towards uh, the way JSP is supposed to be held, based on the spirit of our 2001 peace agreement. I am totally satisfied that President Aroma and myself, in front of ministers and members of parliament, both, both parliaments, uh, both national parliament as well as Bougainville, uh, we were able to successfully conclude a uh, very, very successful uh, uh, meeting. Today we reached a understanding, a joint agreement, and that is um, a great really place uh, on your leadership, the, the quality leadership that you have. Um, you have um, made into understanding the Bowen Peace Agreement that the people of Bowen and so on behalf of um, um, uh, my government and the people, thank you so much, Honorable Prime Minister. Uh, this is the, one of those first steps forward that we have taken. The national government will continue efforts to build major infrastructures around the country. Prime Minister James Marape says especially infrastructures to enable business growth and attract investment. PM Marape made this statement during a breakfast with the members of the Business Council this week in Port Moresby. Speaking earlier this week, Prime Minister James Marape echoed sentiments of assisting business growth in the country. Given the harsh environment by the pandemic, PMRP says his government is at work to address obstacles of business investment. He says the government is guided by a policy framework. I know there's a lot of blackouts lately. Uh, we have uh, now fired up Dirio and fired up uh, uh, the new power that has been running, hopefully in Port Mosby within the very, very uh, near future. We should have cheaper, reliable power and this will be a part of our government's intention to ensure the enabling infrastructures are uh, refurbished or reconstructed or constructed to ensure businesses and residents of our country are operating in an environment that has the enabling infrastructures to support. Marape spoke highly of opening up major projects in the oil and gas sector to generate employment and investment. While this is crucial, the Prime Minister highlighted government's intention to weed out corruption both in the private and public sector, a step where Parliament and NEC has all the backing. So we've started the work on fighting corruption as an economic tool, and I ask you all to support us in this cause. We've started work on ensuring that we have enabling infrastructures, our focus on infrastructure, label under Connect PNG for the next 10 years, there will be consistent intervention in crucial infrastructures, amongst them major highways that will unlock our country. I give you one as an example. We want to open up late to Port Mosby connection to our Trans uh, Island Highway, and I thank the Australian government who have shown a keen interest in partnering us in this space uh, so that it cuts all down the cost of ship. You could cut cargo and goods by highway. The private sector contributes nearly 70% of the country's economy. During the breakfast, PM Marape urged the business sector to work with the government. He says understanding each other will only pave a better way for inclusive growth and more investment in the country. 
So I look forward to continual dialogue with the Business Council for those of you who have some uh, advices on how we could reform our, uh, our, our tax structure, we reform our public policies to ensure business are given the support and we remove impediments, but support you uh, become, uh, find it easy to do business in our country, please offer your advice through your uh, business council here and our interface with them. We can pick up your suggestions, you can pick up your advices and we can all make it better for us going forward. Jack Lapower Jr. National MTV News. The Catholic Bishops' Conference of PNG and Solomon Islands in partnership with Caritas Australia has taken initiative to carry out a COVID-19 awareness program in Gulf Province. The assessment and awareness program aims to determine the level of literacy in regard to COVID-19 and food security in the region. The three-day monitoring and evaluation program was sponsored by the Australian Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade and facilitated by the Catholic Bishop Conference in partnership with Caritas Australia. Several Catholic missions, schools and parishes around Kerema town were selected under this program. The program aims to determine the level of literacy in regards to COVID-19 and food security issues in the region. The team of six was divided into two groups and visited various schools and parishes, educating people on COVID-19 and safety measures they should take. They explained that this assessment and awareness program is vital as it is a key method of helping communities strengthen their defense against natural disasters. And the program will end so meaningful and sustainable activities are carried out to build resilience and promote food security. According to an officer from CBC, people in rural parts of the country are still not fully aware of the coronavirus disease, its symptoms and its global impacts. And this awareness program is the first of its kind in this part of the country. They are calling on government health authorities to focus on COVID-19 awareness in rural parts of the country. And more funding will be made available through CBC and relevant humanitarian organizations for more awareness program. A brief of their findings was presented to the Bishop of Kerema, who expressed his gratitude, saying it is an essential way of identifying key needs, particularly in the health sector, to enable safer practices among society. Rayon Lakingu National, MTV News. Health officials blame the rise in coronavirus disease in West New Britain on its poor response. Since the first case of COVID-19 was reported in West New Britain in November last year, the number of cases continues to rise. As of yesterday, it recorded 194 cases surging past East New Britain and other provinces that reported the initial cases, claiming the third highest placing in the country behind National Capital District and Western Province. This has now placed West New Britain as a hotspot for COVID-19 in the New Guinea Islands region and country. A medical team from the National Control Centre was initially deployed to West New Britain in November 2020 to assess factors leading to an increase in cases. A prisoner convicted for willful murder by the Loringau National Court had escaped from correctional service custody just after he was recaptured by Manus police. 28-year-old Wendol Agua from Likum village in Pombuma LLG and another 22-year-old Kevin Morimbe, also from Pombuna LLG, climbed over the razor-wired fence at the CS facility and escaped on February 4th. Manus Police Commander Chief Inspector David Yapu said Agua was involved in a string of criminal activities including the discharge of a firearm and is considered dangerous and a high-risk prisoner. Yapu is now calling on residents in Manus to assist police recapture these dangerous criminals. You're watching National MTV News. We'll be back with more stories after these messages. Stay with us. Welcome back. PNGA has announced the extension of restrictions of flights into Misima Island due to poor runway conditions at Bagawa. The temporary closure of this vital service has been made known to the provincial government since the initial flight restrictions that came into effect in January. Through a media advisory dated 4th February, the airline company says the restrictions will continue until such a time the runway is upgraded and in compliance with civil aviation standards. Meanwhile, PNGA has regular flights into Gurney in Milne Bay's capital. 
Money Plus, like any other corporate or financial institution in the country, has been contributing in many causes. The recent 26-seater uh, bus to Port Moresby General Hospital. This is the first donation of Money Plus this year to assist Port Moresby General Hospital in its logistic needs. We hope that this bus will be a benefit. Money Plus is one of the financial institutions currently operating in the country. Through its community service obligations, MoneyPlus donates a new bus to the country's first referral hospital. A bus to the Port Moresby Hospital so they can help out with logistics, with transportation of staff to and from, from the uh, residences to the hospital and from the hospital to the residences. Uh, as a corporate body, we, we feel obliged to assist as part of our community service obligation. And we know that others will see what we are doing and they too can contribute. This will assist in the hospital's transportation walls. Port Mosby General Hospital employs more than a hundred staff who reside away from the hospital. Thus, transporting them has been an issue, especially when current hospital fleet are old with many operating with mechanical faults. So we have uh, 1,630 staff to run a 1,200 bed hospital. To run such a service, we need uh, to move our staff from work uh, back to their residents and residents back. We do eight hourly shifts uh, to provide 24 hour service. So many of our staff live up at Laloki. So moving the staff back and forth is a big logistic nightmare for us. But uh, we have never had a new bus for many years. Our six buses have all, uh, uh, we continue to push them on the road. So finally they gave up. So last year I decided that we just throw the buses away. So. When the CEO, without discussing, yeah, when he asked me what do you want, I said, no, we need a bus. This is the first donation to support the hospital. Alexis Sengi, National MTV News. St. Michael Primary School in Bakoyudu in the Karuku district of Central is in a poor state to accommodate students. According to the locals, the school has not been renovated since it was built by the French missionaries. Some have given up hope that the school will never see changes. St. Michael Primary School is in Bakoyudu village which is located on the mountainous parts of the Kairuku district. The primary school's classroom is literally falling apart. The walls have holes through them that allows you to look through from one classroom to another and is in no condition to accommodate students. For now, as you can see, if you look around our classroom, our classroom, the infrastructure is not very well at this moment. We don't have, we have broken walls. If you go inside a classroom, you will see that we have broken walls. The blackboards are not in good order. The volumes, the volumes of the classroom is falling. If you, as, you, as you walk around, you will see. When MTV interviewed the teachers, they raised concerns about the school resource materials. Students' textbooks, teachers' resource books and children's reading books are not available for the school to use. It is the survival of the fittest for the students. For textbook, right now we don't have any textbooks at all. Only we are uh, using children's book and we have only one copy each for each grade. Most of the children here, they are very, very bright but we have lack of resources. So most students, they are not performing very well with the academic, but those who really concentrate, they perform very well. Although the local MP Peter Isoaimo presented them with 40,000 kina in 2015, it was enough to build a teacher's house and the admin building. With the opportunity presented to them, they are calling on the government and the NGOs to help them. The children are our future and we have to ground them well in terms of education. And the services, especially for the school materials, book, pen and all these ones, and it cannot uh, do any bigger infrastructure work in the school. That's why we need a government assistant there. Uh, if they could come big and then uh, come and see for themselves uh, uh, how the condition of our school is. St. Michael's Primary School was established in the 1960s by the French missionaries. When they left, this school has never seen renovation since. Although this school is falling apart, it has provided services to the people of Bakoyudu. All I can say is that this school is in dire need of refurbishment. 
Gertrude Gabi, National MTV News. An old and run-down high school outside Mendy Town has received a double dormitory after more than 20 years of ignorance. Buyebi High School has records in sending more than 10 grade 10 students to School of Excellence, the national high schools in the country. The local Imbongu MP and Minister for Intergovernment Relations, Pila Neningi, officially opened and handed over the key to the administrations yesterday. Buyebi High School is situated close to the Buyebi Correctional Service, few minutes drive out of Mendy Town. However, there are few classrooms, few teachers' houses and semi-permanent dormitories for both boys and girls to reside. These old dormitories have no windows for ventilation, no lighting and barren ground for students to lie down. School principal Jennifer Peter said despite odds, her students still make it to national high schools and through to universities. Only that had must stay of school in South Africa and dust dormitory building or sleep. The living condition is not good, the facilities here are not good, but yet all excel. At least me appeal or some some kind of this lagano legally or dormitory or science lab or this lagan something and go now. I'm black in secondary school. People for honor of the law many people hungry looks in secondary school. Local MP and Minister for Intergovernment Relations Pila Niningi visited the school years back and after hearing their situation, a double dormitory was constructed which can house 114 students. The materials were imported overseas to give a facelift to the school and will also attract teachers and students. It was built at a cost of 1.7 million kina. Teachers. We all join together, administration, we all join together to improve our education system. You must make sure that this kid goes, was probably, eat probably, go to school, you nurse them, look after them, then the kid will learn. Otherwise, you think what's a beginning by talking, good man, don't know, go sleep, kiss him, sabe, he no, no, it doesn't work that way. Michael Ipa, Kane Construction Managing Director, was a former student of Buyebi High School. This was his dream to one day return and give back to the school. His encouragement is for the students to study hard and pursue their dreams. <laughs> Many of the warders send their children to Buyebi High School. The school needs the support of the Education Department and the provincial government to build more classrooms, teachers' houses, library and science lab. Minister Niningi also presented an ambulance to the nearby health center. Vasanata Yama, National MTV News, Mount Hagen. Numbo LLG in Yanguru South Sea District of East Pacific hosted its second life skills training recently to empower women. 75 women and girls attended. Women leaders say interest has grown with more calls to fund similar life skills training. In a small but significant ceremony, the life skills training in the Numbo LLG of Yanguru South Sea District was attended by the officers of Division of Community Development and village participants. Participants say in the past, there was no such training to enhance their livelihood. They also called on Governor Alan Bird to consider funding such programs in the 2021 Isipik Provincial Government Budget. <laughs> I'm so only good one to counsel of women in the city. Look, it's all in the happy of the family of my plan. My plan is my mom so sad. You can have a mom that I talk to, and I think about my plan. Now, and budget for last year, and my plan is this year. Now, my plan is like this year, budget for you, but you think my plan is governor. Women leaders say more women were interested, but were busy with other household chores. But to say my plan stop in this underground, and my plan is my plan, my plan is my mom so making my plan available, and my plan is my mom. Enjoy this time. Uh, all get up, all mama and susa stop this time. And um, we plan how much thread law. A big plan how much to keep people black and law. Provincial governor of the plan. The attendees of the program were from the four rings of the Numbo LLG, namely Sembo Ring, Kusambuk Ring, Sasuya Ring, and Manduhuna Ring. No, not beside them, most of the time, I'm no long plan. 
Alexis Singi, National MTV News. And Shuka Sports is next. All the updates coming up after the break. Stay tuned. Tukai Sports. Welcome to Chukai Sports. Acting CEO of Papua New Guinea Rugby Football League, Stanley Hondina, says that the PNGRFL has a new decentralised governance structure which focuses on developing rugby league at the confederate level, especially at the local league level. The implementation of the new governance and management structure of the Papua New Guinea Rugby Football League commenced with the pilot reform undertaken in New Island Province in partnership with the game stakeholders in the province and the new model has been named the New Island Model. Acting Chief Executive Officer of the PNGRFL, Stanley Hondina, was in Juwaka last week and announced to the crowd present during the kickoff of the Juwaka Governors' Cup that PNGRFL has a new decentralized structure in place to bring focus back to the local leagues. <laughs> Hondina added that they are partnering with the four confederates and rolling out the new governance structure and one of their main priorities is to use rugby league to help curb social issues. In essence, the New Island model establishes and delegates authority for rugby league administration and management to the affiliated leagues, provincial boards and confederate boards. <laughs> Fidel Sukina, Chukai Sports. And that story ends Chukai Sports. There were the details after this break. Chukai Sports. True Kai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. A look at the weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow in the southern region. Mostly fine weather in Port Moresby, Kerama, and Alutau. Cloudy with a few showers in Daru and cloudy with some rain showers in Popandita. The weather update was proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. And that's the new sport and weather for Saturday, 6th of February 2021. On behalf of the news team, pleasant viewing, be safe and bye for now. <laughs>